so welcome back to learn skn and we are going to look at part two of cap of factors of production we're going to look at capital and we are going to look at entrepreneurship in the previous video we looked at land and labor we defined land and labor and today we are going to look at capital and entrepreneurship and we are also going to touch and uh, on the the fact the rewards for each of the factors of production let's roll on to capital as a factor of production definition of capital as a factor of production we're going to go right back to the top of that one capital as a factor of production refers to all the goods used to produce more goods simple as that so capital refers to all the goods used to produce more goods some people think capital is just money. Capital is not just money. Capital is all the resources used. Let's just put it this way. All the resources that are man-made that are used in the production process. So capital includes the buildings, the machinery, the equipment, the, the vehicles, and of course the money, your inventory, your stocks. So all those things in, are included in the factor of production capital all the goods used to produce more goods money cars the building equipment machinery all of those are under the broad heading of capital so let's read what the book has capital in the economic context refers to goods used to produce more goods these goods are not wanted for their own sake but rather to help in the production of other goods and services the purchase of capital goods is an investment all right so that's what you call an investment the purchase of capital goods is an investment such as a purchase such a purchase is not a part of current consumption we're going to look at that later on when looking more in depth at these other topics capital is therefore any man-made as i said earlier goods used in production and we gave the examples earlier here are some sewing machines used by the village seamstress is her capital the crane used by the port workers to lift heavy containers that's their capital so as i said before capital are all those man-made goods used in the production of other goods now what are some features of capital capital put a certain features capital is man-made as i said before as opposed to land which is naturally occurring next one units of the same type of capital are homogeneous so all them are the same money is money right units of the same type of capital are homogeneous money is money a pickup is a pickup equipment is equipment so all them are homogeneous unlike labor as i said earlier that is not homogeneous is different mobility of capital varies some size and jobs that that the unit of capital is meant to perform so the mobility of capital varies with the size and the job so of course you can transfer a certain amount of money to a next island you know a small amount but some might be too large to transfer maybe able to ship equipment from one island to the next but some might be installed in a in a, in a in a factory that cannot really be moved so the mobility of capital varies depending on the size and those kind of things so in every single aspect of capital you can move for example you cannot up and move a factory because and the factory is capital you cannot just up and just take a, a, a factory and put it on a ship and move it that's kind of impractical but of course you can move you can move some of your stocks some of the ingredients for example a baker can move your flour from one place to the next you can move sugar from one place to the next you can move some amount of money from one place to the next but it's not everything you can move so capital mobility is somewhat very we know land cannot move labor is mobility is somewhat very is somewhat you know it's more it's the most mobile of the of the factors of production of course capital can be differentiated all right capital can be differentiated we know for those of us who do uh, accounts we have you know working capital fixed capital work you know assets so there are different types of capital you have working capital fixed capital social capital and human capital so what is working capital that's the raw material used in the production process working capital are those things used in the production process for example if you're a baker working capital for you would be your flour your sugar and whatever else you use your oil whatever else you use in 
the production process. So the working capital, uh, all those things are going to be used up during the production process. They're going to be used up during production, working capital. On the other hand, you have fixed capital. Now, fixed capital comprise of those fixed assets. Those are the things that remain after production has taken place. For example, again, I'm going to use the baker analogy, bakery analogy. We are, if you're a baker, your fixed capital would include your stove, your oven, your delivery van. After you bake a batch of bread, your pans are going to remain, your oven is going to remain, your, to deliver, your van is going to remain. So those are your fixed assets, your fixed capital. Whereas your working capital as a baker are things like your flour, you're going to use up that during production of your bread. Your yeast, you're going to use up your yeast during the production of the bread. Your, your shortening, your butter, your, your margarine, whatever you're using, that is going to be used up during the production of your bread. So working capital are those raw materials and intermediate goods that are used up, are used in the production process. Whereas fixed capital are those assets, those fixed assets that are not your machinery, the factory itself, your vehicle, your equipment, they are not going to be used up during the production process. Of course, you have what you call it social capital or infrastructure, and this, this is normally provided by the government, and that includes things like your roads, your bridges, your light posts, hospitals, schools, those kind of things. Those are the social infrastructure, the social things provided by the government. And of course, you have your human capital, which is a simpler way to call the hu labor, your human effort. So your human capital are the people, the, human can the people's abilities and knowledge and skills. So basically your labor is your human capital. Now to improve your human capital, of course, you go to university, you train them, you educate them, and that would bolster your human capital. Your human capital are the people, the ability, their knowledge and skills that are used in the production process. Next aspect of capital we're going to look at is what you call capital accumulation. Capital accumulation. Now this is, is this is also another name for basically investment, because you're going to you're going to invest now for future prospects or future uh, improvements. So let's read what the book says about capital accumulation, so you can have a better understanding. Capital accumulation is the increase in the capital stock of a country. For there, for there to be capital accumulation, society must forgo present consumption. The public must consume less and save some income. So this is what we're talking about. Investment. You have to consume less now for future benefits. So you're investing. Continuing. Firms will borrow, borrow the funds saved to purchase more capital. So again, firms will borrow the funds saved to purchase more capital. So you go to the bank. You borrow some money, so you invest, so you invest in, so you can purchase more capital. So you go to the bank to purchase a new vehicle. You go to the bank to purchase a new machine, a new oven, a new stove. If you are a baker, okay. So you go to the bank to purchase, you know, those equipment you might need for to improve your productive capacity. The increased capital increases the productive capacity of the overall country. So that's important, right? A, a capital accumulation is the investment in capital now so that you can have improved capacity in the future and of course we all we, we look at this before when look we looked at labor but now look at the other side of the coin in recent times there have been many advances in technology these advances are making capital more and more versatile so capital can actually do things that labor once did as we said before robots are taking over mechanization automation is taking over capital is important as it is not replacing labor in the workplace as we said before the bottling process in the caribouri in trinidad is now fully automated and so there is no need for workers on the production line automated teller machines have replaced bank tellers in many banks capital is also important because it can be imported this means that a country can increase its productive potential by importing capital goods. So this paragraph here is highlighting the fact that in production, you can actually substitute labor 
capital for labor. You can actually substitute capital for labor as technology is advancing. People can be replaced by machinery, as the examples pointed out here. They said the bottling process in the breweries is now fully automated. Back in the day, humans had to actually line up in assembly line, clean the bottles, fill the bottles with soda or whatever the drinks are, and then pack them into the cases and then help ship them out. So now that has changed dramatically where everything, you go to a factory, you see automation taking place. Humans are no longer required on the production floor. For one, we are slower than machines, so that means efficiency has gone up with the improvement in production with, uh, with, with capital. And for two, it might be expensive in the short run, but in the long run, it's going to pay off. So humans, labor can be substituted, capital can be substituted for labor. And that's a key point to note. Capital now can be substituted for labor. So that's a key note that we can end on for capital. Now the last factor of production we're going to look at is entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial talent. Now this is the factor of production that the fourth one that brings all the others together. That's the main job of the entrepreneur entrepreneurship. They bring all of the factors of production together. That's the main key about entrepreneurship right there. Entrepreneurship is not regarded as a separate factor of production. In the past, it might have been considered as part of labor, but they took out that. Entrepreneurs perform two functions. First, the, he, we're not gonna say he, they combine the other three factors of production in a profitable manner. And second, the entrepreneur is a factor that bears the risk of production. So the factor of production, entrepreneurship is that skill that talent that you that is needed to bring the other three land labor and capital together to form a productive uh, a productive profitable unit of production that's what the entrepreneur is all about entrepreneurs is about bringing all the factors of production together in order to produce something also they are the ones the entrepreneurs are the ones that bear the risk involved in starting a business starting an enterprise starting a firm so that's what the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur is all about as a factor of production. So based on the definition in the book, entrepreneur is the one who is willing to take a substantial financial risk to begin or organize a business. The entrepreneur organizes the, the other three factors of production together. Now let me just put an, a note on this one where they say substantial financial risk. That is true, but an entrepreneur also takes a calculated risk because to be honest you're not, you're not a good entrepreneur if it takes such a risk knowing that it might fail it has to be a calculated risk that's a skill there you have to know what risk to take you cannot just jump off a cliff just like that it has to be a calculated risk so that's the four factors of production in a nutshell so that's land labor capital entrepreneurship let's re recap the definitions Land is defined as all naturally occurring free gifts of nature. Labor is the physical and mental effort of man in the production process. Capital refers to all the goods and services used to produce more goods. Entrepreneurship refers to the risk involved in organizing the other three factors of production together. So these are the factors of production. Those are the factors of production and the definitions for all of them. Now, one last thing we're going to look at to end off on the factors of production, factors of production, we are going to look at what the syllabus calls the rewards for the various factors of production, the rewards for the factors of production. And it's a simple, simple thing to understand. The rewards for the factors of production are rent, wages and salaries, interest and profit. So the factor payments rewards for each factor of production is broken down here in this table and i said before land the factor reward for land is rent labor the factor reward for labor is of course wages or salaries you got to work you get your wages you get your salaries capital the of course the reward is interest interest paid on the capital and entrepreneurship of course the reward for that is profit if you run a successful business you're going to obtain a profit so those are the matching factors of production to the factor rewards 
for each. Again, land, you get rent, that's the reward for land. Labor, the reward for labor is wages or salaries. Capital, the reward is interest. And entrepreneurship, the reward is profits. Okay, so we're gonna end here for now. And we're gonna pick up later on with, like I said, the syllabus didn't re don't really go in order. So we're gonna pick up, pick up from objective one. We did objective two. And we are going to jump into objective three. So next video, we're going to jump into objective one and three. We basically just knocked off objective two, all of objective two. So we're going to stay here for now. So of course, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and you turn on the notification bell so that you know when the next video drops. All right.